Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Three suspects still on the loose after a shooting on the southeast side. We'll have the latest information from police. At least 14 states seeing a growing number of COVID-19 cases. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking you outside with live cam. What are the rain chances for the rest of the week? Mike is standing by with details. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, May 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Yesterday was nice outside. It was nice, but as we go into day, Mike and our weather team are concerned about the possibility of severe weather. Right, and you know, what's was interesting yesterday, all of a sudden there was that one lone cell that popped up right over the airport in northeast uh, the northeast part of uh, San Antonio did produce a little bit of pea-sized hail. And really? Yeah, it was just this little tiny, tiny spot hmm. right there that popped up. Now, off to the northeast, there is the chance for uh, some severe storms, and uh, it's going to be anything that does pop up could be uh, definitely on the nasty side. Now, this morning, it's fairly pleasant. We do have some clouds out there right now, and uh, temperatures are still a little bit below normal, some 50s, 60s. Uh, the humidity is, it's there. It's okay. Mold is, did go down from the previous day's reading, but it's still obviously very, very high. 83 at noon today, 90 for a high temperature. A lot of sunshine, a good-looking day, and then it's going to be late this afternoon and the evening hours when we're going to start to see some showers and thunderstorms fire up. There's a pretty potent uh, disturbance that's going to be moving in here from the north down to the uh, southeast and storm prediction center has new Braunfels, uh, almost just about Kerrville, maybe Fredericksburg, uh, San Marcos, Austin under the enhanced risk for severe storms. Very large hail is going to be the biggest threat and also some high winds with this, but that's a pretty good chance when you get into that orange for a strong to severe storm. San Antonio as well as going up in toward um, just to the west of Kerrville, as well as uh, Seguin under the slight risk for severe storms, and that's going to be late this afternoon and this evening. After that, things have kind of changed a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Wednesday morning. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Mike, and good morning, everyone. As we take a look at the roadways, looking pretty good. Not to a uh, pretty good start, not too bad. Let's move over to Transguide, 21 at Hildoran. Later on, as some of that uh, moisture comes in this evening, remember, turns and curves just like this. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas. 410 and Highway 151, you're going to see some flashing lights out there. Looks like they're trying to get a move on and get everything picked up and out of the way. It appears that they're backing up and picking up those construction barrels. 35 to 604, no problems there. 21 at Winding Way. North and South on Lane still have more than enough room this morning. Mark? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police need your help finding a missing 10 month old girl. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with more on our top story this morning. Sarah, good morning. Police say she may be with a relative. Good morning, Mark. That's right. Police believe that she may be with her mother, but just take a look at your screen to see if you recognize this 10 month old child. Now, police believe she may be with her biological mother who was recently ordered to turn over the child to Child Protective Services. The baby's girl, the baby girl's name is Rhiannon. She is 10 months old. Rhiannon's last name is Sullivan. She weighs about 20 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes with a medium complexion. She was last seen in the 6200 block of Ridge Lake. She has straight hair that goes to her ears and was last seen wearing a pink onesie. If you have seen or may know where she is, you are asked to call police at 210-207-7660. And again, you can find that information on our website right now at ksat.com. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, this morning, San Antonio police are still looking for several men after a shooting on the southeast side. Police say two groups of men were fighting when someone pulled out a gun and fired. One person was shot above the knee, taken to the hospital. Another person was found unconscious from a physical beating. All of this happening on Bullmore Drive. Officers say they are looking for three men who ran towards Goliad and Pecan Valley. Here's a look at the latest numbers of COVID-19 in Bear County. This morning we're sitting at 2,480 cases. The number of deaths remains at 69. The number of recoveries also remains the same at nearly 1,300. More than 1,100 cases remain active with 87 patients needing treatment in a hospital. Metro Health is hoping it can learn more about COVID-19 through a community survey. 
They want to learn about testing, symptoms, and social distancing behavior in every zip code. The survey would be used to help with future measures in the coming months. We have a link on ksat.com. The survey will be evaluated every two weeks through August the 3rd. As states reopen and more Americans become eager to get outside, the U.S. death toll from COVID-19 is closing in on 100,000. There are also signs of progress, though, in the war against the virus. ABC's Inez de la Cuartera has the latest from Washington. This morning, new concerns after scenes like these over the weekend. If you don't want to catch it, then stay home. From beaches to pool parties and busy boardwalks, many Americans close together, many without masks. It seems like the younger generation doesn't have any fear here, and so it's really more of a generational thing. The number of cases now rising in at least 14 states. But there are also signs of progress. In New York, Long Island beginning to reopen, leaving New York City as the only region in the state still shut down. Nevada now moving into phase two. Casino scheduled to reopen at the beginning of June. Sports also starting to get back to business. The NHL announcing plans to restart by skipping the regular season and going straight to playoffs. Games will be closed off to everyone except the teams and a small support staff. We will not do anything until we are assured that it is safe and prudent to do so. Dr. Deborah Burke stressing. Social distancing is absolutely critical. And if you can't social distance and you're outside, you must wear a mask. This as the president and his 2020 opponents spar over the issue of face masks. Trump criticizing former Vice President Biden for wearing a mask on Memorial Day. He was standing uh, outside with his wife, perfect conditions, perfect weather. While Biden fired back on CNN. He's a fool, an absolute fool to talk that way. I mean, every leading doc in the world is saying we should wear a mask when you're in a crowd. And today, Disney will present its plans to reopen Walt Disney World in Orlando. Disneyland Shanghai opened earlier this month with a limited number of guests and social distancing measures in place. In de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 437, 66 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, we're going to take a look at how a low-budget horror film that has suddenly become the number one movie at the box office. And history set to be made today as two NASA astronauts scheduled to blast off on a SpaceX rocket from U.S. soil this afternoon. And taking you outside with live cam. We're tracking your forecast for the weekend coming up. In your morning headlines, the first ever manned mission for SpaceX is set to launch later today. It's the first mission from U.S. soil to enter Earth's orbit since NASA retired the space shuttle back in 2011. The two astronauts at the helm, Colonels Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. If the mission is successful, this will be the first commercially built aircraft to carry Americans to the International Space Station. That'd be spacecraft, rather. Apologize. Uh, you can watch live coverage of the launch right here on KSAT and KSAT.com beginning at 3.15 this afternoon. Tens of thousands of doctors and nurses have gotten sick while taking care of COVID-19 patients. That's according to a new report by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. In the newest report, the agency says more than 62,000 healthcare professionals contracted coronavirus in the United States. That is a big jump from the more than 9,200 the CDC reported back in mid-April. At least 291 healthcare workers have died from the virus. The CDC believes the current numbers are possibly an undercount because many of the reported cases did not say if the patient worked in health care. Today on Wall Street, stocks will start off on a good note. After a great finish yesterday, all three indices ended with gains on the first day of trading where traders were allowed back on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Exchange closed its doors due to the pandemic. Gains were as a result of states continuing to reopen their economies and optimism surrounding a potential COVID-19 vaccine. The Dow gained more than 500. NASDAQ and S&P also finished higher. 441, 66 degrees. Are you ready to add another streaming service to your list of subscriptions? No. More on the launch of HBO Max coming up. Yeah, we made it be at a max point with all these streaming options, right? No, it's like, gosh, that's a lot. And next, more on how the Bear County Courthouse is addressing a backlog of cases because of the pandemic. The pandemic. <laughs> Welcome back to Time Now's 444. America's number one movie at the box office is a low-budget horror film that's become an unlikely hit. ABC's Will Reeve has details in your GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the number one movie in America, but you've probably never heard of it. Hey, what's going on? With so many theaters shuttered and so many movie companies holding their releases, the independent horror flick The Wretched has taken the box office crown three weeks in a row, making $600,000. Do Don't let her in. Overnight, GMA caught up with the stunned filmmakers. It doesn't make any sense, is what... <laughs> Yeah, I think the furthest we ever thought it might go is like, maybe someday this will be on a streaming platform. To have such a large amount of people see it in such a short period of time, uh, you know, it's nerve wracking at the same time. You're like, I just hope they liked it. <laughs> and coming up at 7 a.m., we'll take a closer look at what's driving the Wretched's box office success. Believe it or not, it's the drive-in theater. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, the number of cases uh, backlogged in the 10 felony district courts in Bear County is over 2,000, and it's getting longer each day. It began when jury service was suspended in mid-March, of course, due to COVID-19. Paul Venema takes a look at the numbers and the proposed plans for recovery. Since the coronavirus outbreak, there have been no prisoners in these courtroom holding cells awaiting trial. Courtroom activity has been limited primarily to pleas and sentencings. But as he reviews the soaring number of cases awaiting trial, Judge Ron Ronhell says it's not time to panic. We never get into panic mode. Whatever the circumstances create for us, we're going to resolve that. What Ron Hell and the other district court judges must resolve is how to deal with over 2,300 cases that are on hold. And that's just in the felony district courts. Civil and county courts, too, are facing backlogs. In the past, on a docket day, we would bring in 20, 25 inmates for one day, and we're going to ramp that down, initially start off with each court, only bringing in five inmates. Trial date for getting the courts up and running is June 15th. That's the plan Ron Hell will be submitting to the regional administrative judge. Frankly, I don't know if we'll ever get back to the type of dockets that we had before. He said the startup will be slow because of the guidelines from masks to social distancing in place at the courthouse as a result of COVID-19. We want people to feel safe when they come in the courthouse and knowing that that is a priority means we need to start slow. Jury trials, which take an average of about one week, probably won't start up until late summer. Well, I think the recovery is going to last at least a year or more. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. All right now it's 447. Mark. Yes, ma'am. What do you say we check the roadways? Let's do that. We'll talk to Mike about Mother Nature's recipe for some problems uh, as we head into tonight. But first up, Marcus. Well, right now you can enjoy the uh, pretty clear driving out there, safe roads out there. Let's move from the map over to Transkai. This is 410 Equilibra Road. And just south of here, Highway 151 Equilibra, they are picking up those construction barrels. The interchange here, the downtown vicinity, 35, 37, you can see, traveling all four directions, no problems. Then I-10 Medical, nice, wide open spaces there. Plenty of room on those open lanes, eastbound or westbound. So uh, it is early, we'll give you that. Take advantage of it while you can. Yes, sir. Mike, we know you're super excited about the SpaceX launch later today, but it's kind of overshadowed by what could happen here at home weather-wise uh, this evening, right? Which would probably, the, the way the timing is working out, it's going to be after that, because the launch is going to mm -hmm. be, I think, at uh, 3.30 our time. Our time, right. That's the scheduled launch mm -hmm. time. And right. then this would really wouldn't start go, getting going until probably about dinner time, early evening. How's, so, how bad is it going to be? Well, I if something does pop up, it could get, uh, it get pretty nasty. Big hail, uh, large hail, and some high winds are going to be the biggest threats tonight and the odds of it have uh, yesterday definitely were ramped up. First of all, beautiful end to a uh, gorgeous day. Yes, it was. But then, like I said yesterday, all of a sudden, right about dinner time, we had that one lone cell that popped up, storm cell that popped up on the uh, kind of northeast side of town and did produce a little bit of, we had some reports of uh, some uh, pretty gusty winds and some pea-sized tail, and then that just moved on out and fizzled on out. But yeah, that's uh, it, it's a very weird atmosphere as of right now. 66 degrees here in town. We are below normal. Uh, 57 in Comfort, 63 in Rio Medina. And the humidity, which this is not bad. I mean, it's kind of comfortable out there. We've got dew points that are upper 50s, 62. 60 being, of course, that uh, sort of threshold when you start to feel the humidity. And, you know, 62, that will take that, especially in late May. Going back 12 hours on the uh, satellite loop, and if you blink right 
there. There's that storm cell that moved on out and just sort of fizzled on out. Also take note that everything is coming in here out of the northwest. And this is one of those where we've got this big low. This is the water vapor imagery. And this thing is centered uh, just about, uh, say, Oklahoma City. And in this flow, you get these little disturbances that just kind of get shoved down in here, race down through, and they can get pretty nasty and that's the situation again this evening. So here's the uh, computer model and uh, you know later on this afternoon there may be a couple of showers well off to the northeast trying to pop up but notice by about late afternoon some of those thunderstorms will be developing basically to the northeast and again high winds and hail even an isolated tornado. I mean perfect example Sunday night. This is not one of those supercell type situations, but you know, you get those little spin ups there and not only can they produce some very high winds, which we saw some straight line winds Sunday night, but then also the outside chance of a very small tornado. So this is going to go through the evening hours. Again, the majority of everything is up to the northeast and could last into a tomorrow morning and then throughout the day tomorrow there could be a scattered shower and once again this northwesterly flow one or two of those stronger thunderstorms could be possible tomorrow and although the odds are not very likely. Here's what's going on as far as the severe threat. So San Antonio almost along, well, just south of I-10, and then up into the hill country, the yellow area is a slight risk for strong to severe storms, which that's a decent chance. Then you get into the enhanced risk. Fredericksburg, uh, just about New Braunfels, Austin area, Seguin, that's the enhanced risk. So that means a much, much better chance that some of those storms are going to be strong to potentially severe. Again, the biggest threat right now with these are going to be uh, large hail, then high winds, of course, an isolated tornado. It's not a great chance at all, but can't completely rule that out. 83 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. So up until all this, we're going to have a beautiful day today, 90 for a high temperature. Then we see those evening storms start to pop up. Some of those may last into the early morning hours. Then in the afternoon, basically out, well, all of the areas under the risk tomorrow, a small risk for a stray storm that could be on the strong side, 87 degrees. Now things have kind of uh, actually flip-flopped a little bit, the way the upper level air patterns are changing. So weekend looks pretty nice. Normal temperatures. A lot of sunshine around here this weekend. Well, hey there, that's a change. Yeah, that's yeah. a that is a change. But late this afternoon, and especially this evening, be on the lookout. Nicole thanks you for Saturday. Oh, you're welcome. Her daughter. Her big party. Daughter. Not invited. You should know thanks. that, Nicole. 452 <laughs> right now, 66 degrees. Up next, HBO is stepping into the streaming wars with its new HBO Max service. We have a preview for you. But first we have lottery numbers. Pick three, five six five, fireball two, daily four. 7263 Fireball 1. And your cash five numbers 2, 13, 30, 32, 34. And your Mega Millions 34, 52, 58, 59, 62. 4 was the Mega Ball with the Mega Flyer of 3. Five till the streaming wars continue with the launch of yet another brand new service. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A massive new streaming service launches today, HBO Max, from parent company AT&T. It'll start with a deep content library, shows from Warner Brothers including Friends and The Big Bang Theory, films from The Wizard of Oz to Wonder Woman, and HBO classics, The Sopranos, Game of Thrones, and more, and originals, including the series Love Life, starring Anna Kendrick. HBO Max will cost 15 bucks a month, but it's free for most HBO subscribers. A surprise from Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling dropping her first non-Harry Potter World book online. The first two chapters of The Ichabog are available for free on The Ichabog website, with new installments out every day. Rowling says she's releasing it now for, quote, children on lockdown, or even those back at school during these strange, unsettling times. <laughs> Legendary Italian tenor Andrea Bocelli has revealed that he had COVID-19. The singer went Tuesday to a hospital in Pisa to donate plasma for research and recovery purposes. He says he tested positive March 10th, then he suffered only mild symptoms. Kind of hard to change a 50th anniversary, but that's what the Doobie Brothers are doing, moving their 50th anniversary tour to next year because of the coronavirus pandemic. It was supposed to start in June, but now look for them to hit the road July 2021. And happy birthday today to Andre 3000, the actor and outcast rapper is 45, while The Good Doctor and West Wing star Richard Schiff is 65. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's now three minutes till, still 66 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, what you need to know when it comes to getting your stimulus payment in the mail. Plus, Amazon could be getting into the self-driving car biz. We'll have details coming up in Tech Bites.
Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police are looking for this missing 10 month old girl. We'll have details on her disappearance. Plus, check your mail carefully. Your stimulus payment might look a little different than what you're expecting. And Mike is talking about the risk for some severe weather in parts of our viewing area. He will tell you what the biggest threat could be after what's been a wild weather week around here. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It's May 27th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Let's get right to Mike and talk about this. What time are we talking around dinner time? Yeah, dinner time and going into the evening hours, mainly up to the northeast. Going to show you the outlook from the uh, Storm Prediction Center in just a moment. But what's going to be interesting is leading up to that, then we're going to have some really nice weather. It's going to be a beautiful day. 66 degrees right now. Got a couple of 50s uh, showing up on the map and the humidity is not bad. It's kind of pleasant when you step outside this morning. Take a look at some of the dew point temperatures around the area. Of course, we always talk about 60 degrees for dew point as being the, the threshold when you can really start to feel the humidity. Obviously, a little bit higher there in Pleasanton, Stinson, but then again, 62 at the airport, 50s in parts of the hill country. It's really, really nice. Comfort, Kerrville, Valverde at 59 degrees. Um, we have a few clouds out there right now. Ton of humidity or a uh, ton of uh, uh, mold, I should say, in the atmosphere. It did go down from the previous day's reading, but it's still extremely high, 16,000 plus. Now, pleasant this morning, more clouds out there, more sunshine today, 90 for high temperature. Some of those storms up to the northeast and could be on the strong to severe side. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat and high winds. Isolated tornadoes, of course, are not likely, but can't be totally ruled out. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, upper 80s. Again, a couple of stray storms are going to be possible tomorrow. And the weekend, things have, have really done a big change. Uh, looks pretty good. Not too awfully hot. A lot of sunshine this weekend. Here's the outlook from Storm Prediction Center. San Antonio, this line, the yellow area off to the east, just south of I-10, and then up into portions of the hill country. That's the slight risk which is a, a decent chance for some of those uh, stronger to severe storms. And then that gets bumped up to the enhanced risk from New Braunfels, uh, Fredericksburg, Blanco, San Marcos, Austin, northeast of there. That's a very good chance for some of those storms to be strong to potentially severe. More on that, a closer look at the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic, here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. And at least for now, things look pretty good with no accidents and uh, some of that construction picked up already. Let's take a closer look through Transcott as we move from the map. We're going to move over here to right now. You can see that the uh, 281 Hildebrand north and south on lanes running smoothly with no issues. Checking on uh, Highway 151 at 410. They did pick up those construction barrels, so all lanes are open once again in all directions. And Highway 98 Lackland so far, no problems there. Leslie. Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police need your help to find a 10 month old girl. Rhiannon Sullivan is believed to be with her biological mother who was recently ordered to turn over the child to Child Protective Services. The girl was last seen Sunday in the 6200 block of Ridge Lake. She has straight hair, ear top length, and was last seen wearing a pink onesie. If you have seen her or know her whereabouts, contact the San Antonio Police Department. That phone number is 210-207-7660. The newest proclamation by Governor Greg Abbott is reopening even more Texas businesses. Beginning this Friday, water parks can reopen at 25% capacity. On Sunday, recreational sports programs for adults can start again, but games and competition can't resume till mid-June. Food courts and malls and driver education programs can also start up again right now. Well, if you get an envelope with a debit card in the mail, do not throw it away. It could be your stimulus payment. Last week, the Treasury Department announced it would issue about 4 million stimulus payments on debit cards and mail them out. The IRS says some payments may be sent on a prepaid debit card known as the Economic Impact Payment Card. One local man says he almost threw his card out. It looked like an ordinary um, bank ad. For a, with a generic card in it. And when I felt it, I was just going to throw it away and like I usually do. And then I said, you know what, I'll open it. Ended up being the stimulus money. The card. Yep. the card will arrive in a plain envelope from Money Network Cardholder Services. Other things to look out for is your name and on the back of the card, the name of the issuing bank, Metabank. They're hailed as heroes, but medical staff at clinics and private physician practices are struggling during the pandemic as many of them try to keep their doors open. A recent survey done by the Texas Medical Association shows patient visits were cut in half or more. Revenue from private practices has also suffered. 
States when you're thinking this is a, a medical crisis. You would almost think it was even would be more physician time needed, but uh, the opposite happened as the elective surgery stopped, diagnostic procedures. A deep concern for practices in rural areas that already struggle. TMA says pediatricians and OBGYN offices are among the specialties most impacted. Some doctors have taken precautions to sustain the hit and hours have been reduced. They also have been able to obtain, some have been able to obtain small business loans. Well, a local woman is hoping more churches will use their parking lots as safe resting areas for struggling families who've been evicted and they're now living out of their cars. Molly Wright came up with the idea when she was homeless and living out of her car about eight months ago. After talking with the city and getting connected with Pastor Jimmy Robles with Last Chance Ministries, her plan is slowly becoming a reality. I was being harassed and moved over everywhere by police and there was no place for me to stay. Um, it was just, it was difficult. I couldn't find any relief anywhere. And so I really could have used a safe parking lot where I could stay overnight in a safe space. From 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., people can drive their cars into the lot of the church to rest overnight. Wright, along with a team of volunteers, will also be there to help. At this time, Mayor Ryan, at this time rather, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the Department of Human Services is coming up with a pilot program to address the need amid the startup of eviction proceedings. Well, the pandemic is leading to more changes in our community. It's impacting at least one graduation. Even after the school made changes, Southside ISD had planned to hold a virtual graduation ceremony today through Friday. Those plans have been put on hold at the last minute. In a letter to graduates and parents, Southside ISD says they consulted with local public health officials and the Texas education agencies before making this decision. District cites concerns for COVID-19 for the discussion, but it's unclear how those concerns were related to a virtual experience. Information on future plans expected to be released at a later date. Our local nonprofits have been hit very hard during the pandemic, and they definitely need your help. It's why KSAT Community highlights organizations in need for Wish List Wednesday. Sarah Costa joins us live from home to tell us about this week's group. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. This week's Wishlist Wednesday is San Antonio Threads. It's a fantastic nonprofit that provides essentials and clothing to risk teens at risk in the San Antonio area. Teens who qualify choose complete outfits, new socks, underwear, bras, toiletries, shoes, and seasonal items. San Antonio Threads provides a safe and nurturing shopping experience for teens ages 12 to 21 who are homeless in foster care system, in emergency situations, or referred to the nonprofit. So how can you help this Wednesday? Well, you can actually help not just this Wednesday, but every day through donations and by volunteering. Donations need to include non-perishable foods, cereal, deodorant, toothpaste, body wash, feminine hygiene products, microwavable meals, granola breakfast bars, and new packages of adult underwear. You can drop off these donations anytime, Monday through Friday, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 10,446 Centennial Street. That's on the city's north side near the airport. The group only accepts new clothing and new toiletries. Now, if you know a child or family that might be in need of these services, you can find all those necessary links right now on ksat.com on our Wishless Wednesday story for today. Reporting live from home, Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Thank you, Miss Sarah. Right now, 508, 66 degrees. Still ahead, famed Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has a new book out. And the best part about it, it's free. We'll tell you where you can get it. And up next, Walmart getting into the resale business. We'll have some way you can take advantage of this new service. And live cam giving us a look outside. Possibility for some severe weather entering our area this afternoon. We'll have some details from Mike Osterhey coming up. Welcome back. Your time now, 12 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, the nation's largest retailer is getting into the resale business. Today, Walmart announced it's partnering up with the platform ThreadUp to sell previously owned apparel, along with other items. According to Walmart, as many as 750,000 items will go up online for sale as new or like new. Right now, the merchandise will only be sold on its website, walmart.com. The retailer says shoppers who buy the resold items will be able to return them to brick-and-mortar Walmart stores for free. 
about 100 more. Apple stores will be back up and running this week, but the company says even though the stores are reopening, most of them will offer only curbside or storefront services. Only 40 stores will allow walk-in customers. But temperature checks and face masks will be a must for both employees and customers there. Those Apple stores located in eight states, including right here in Texas. People stuck in quarantine have been numbing the pain with alcohol. Total alcohol sales from stores in the U.S. have grown more than 26 percent between mid-March and mid-May compared to the same time last year. That's not really enough to offset losses, though. The market analysis shows global sales will decline by 12 percent this year because the closed restaurants and bars and because of canceled sporting events and festivals. There's also the loss revenue from alcohol sales during flights, on cruises and duty-free shops. 513, 66 degrees. It's been more than 30 years since the movie Labyrinth came out, but we'll have a preview of the long-awaited sequel that was just announced. And up next, more on Amazon's latest efforts to buy a self-driving car company. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves the moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. Welcome back. Amazon reportedly in talks to buy a self-driving car company. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon's effort to increase its automation. To do that, the online retail giant is reportedly in talks to buy a driverless vehicle startup. Analysts say completing the deal would help Amazon manage its rising shipping costs. Google plans to reopen a limited number of its offices after the July 4th holiday weekend. The company's CEO says returning to brick and mortar locations will be optional for the rest of the year. Workers who stay home will get a $1,000 allowance for equipment. And Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has published a new children's book and it's free. It's called The Ichabog and will be available in seven weekly installments on the website, The Ichabog.com. She wrote it years ago while working on Harry Potter, but it's not part of his world of enchantment. No halt works, no muggles. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. And time check right now. We're at 517, 66 degrees. We're going to get that updated there at the bottom of your screen shortly, so stand by. And right now we want to get an update on your morning commute. How's it looking on the roadways on this Wednesday? Well, it's still looking pretty good outside. As we take a look at the map, you can see no incidents out there. So that's the great news. So we're going to transition from the map, map from the map rather back over to Transkite. I-10 at Burning Stage Road, no problem. 35 at FM 1103. We're seeing a few more vehicles out there, but it's still dark. And I-10 at Burning Stage Road, traffic in both directions is still extremely light. No problems there. 35 at Schwab Road, despite the uh, flashing lights, it's been there for quite some time there in between the on the medium and in between the uh, entrance ramp and the main lanes as we move over here you can see in the downtown vicinity 35 in Flotus that's the upper deck looking at the northbound lanes towards the interchange of 37 and 35 so so far no issues no issues good sign all right so we've had a lot of uh, strong to severe storms in our neck of the woods as of late certainly not a time to let our guard down going into tonight no especially because we've got a really nice day leading up to all of this. So that's why people may get a little bit of, uh, you know, a calm and that, that feeling of security. But uh, we do have that chance for again tonight and this evening for some uh, stronger storms. Beautiful view of the uh, waxing crescent moon. It's going to be at first quarter in just a couple of days. Boy, it's a pretty picture. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. Pleasant morning. Temperatures are really nice. We're actually about uh, four degrees below normal. Should be at 70 for a normal low temperature right now. Even some 50s in parts of the hill country. And the humidity, 
Now, granted, it's a little bit higher around Stinson and Pleasanton with dew points at uh, 65, 67 respectively, but low 60s, 50s, that's nice. I mean, it's really nice out there. Kerrville and Comfort with those dew points of 55. We've got this big, big low, which is centered just to the north of us, and this is what is taking this northwesterly flow, and these little disturbances wrap around this thing, and these are the ones that they're sometimes kind of hard to uh, to forecast to predict but we've got a pretty good one that's going to be coming on in here later on this evening and that's what's going to be producing some potentially strong storms so throughout most of the day gonna have a lot of sunshine we got some clouds right now and then by late this afternoon we start to see some of those thunderstorm cells developing especially well up to the northeast and that will continue on into dinner time and the early evening hours and the biggest threat with this is going to be very large hail as well as high winds now an isolated tornado and perfect example was Sunday night where we, we don't have any of those big supercell storms around there but it's just those little spin ups that can happen along with some very strong gusty straight line winds that so that's going to be a very small chance later on tonight so this will continue on into the evening hours there may actually be a couple of leftovers early tomorrow morning so we'll have to be on the lookout for that but everything again in that northwesterly flow is going to be sliding down to the southeast a couple of scattered showers are possible tomorrow then there's going to be the another chance for maybe a stray strong storm tomorrow. So we'll still have a, a small risk for something on the strong to severe side tomorrow. Going into Friday, a couple of leftover showers. Now, as far as today is concerned, Storm Prediction Center, yesterday at this time, if you recall, we had the yellow area, the slight risk, which was well up there to the north. Now, yesterday afternoon, Storm Prediction Center really ramped this up. So San Antonio uh, heading over toward Gonzales and then up into portions of the hill country, Bandera, for instance, under the slight risk for a strong to severe storm, which in itself is a it's an OK chance for something on the stronger side. And then the enhanced risk, the orange area, New Braunfels, San Marcos, uh, just about maybe in toward Bernie and going up toward Fredericksburg, Austin. That's the enhanced risk, which is a much better chance for strong to potentially severe storm. And then tomorrow, all of the area has that marginal risk. That's just taking into account one or two of those random stray storms that could be on the stronger side tomorrow. After that, things are looking pretty good. We've had a pretty good change as far as the weekend is concerned. 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. So again, it's very comfortable out there. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to see a lot of sunshine, 90 high temperature. About late afternoon, dinner time, we start to see some of those storms popping up up to the north and to the northeast and that's going to continue into the evening hours and maybe even a few of them overnight. Then tomorrow afternoon a stray storm or two is going to be popping up 87 degrees 85 on Friday. Friday through the weekend now looks fantastic. We were looking at some rain chances. You, you can't completely rule out a stray shower or two, but um, this weekend looks pretty nice. But this afternoon download the app. Keep tuned because things could get nasty north. We will be here for you. Yep, yes. that's the best part. You guys have us covered. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Great. Mike. Six, five, rather, 522, 66 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, after more than three decades, fans of the movie Labyrinth are finally getting a sequel. We have a preview. And your pick three numbers, 565, five, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 7263, Fireball 1. And your cash, 5, 2, 13, 30, 32, 34. And your Mega Millions, 34, 52, 58, 59, 62, Mega Ball of 4, and a Mega Plier of 3. Movie and music news now, including a sequel decades in the making. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in your Hollywood Minute. More than 30 years later, Labyrinth is getting a sequel. George Lucas and Jim Henson teamed up on the 1986 fantasy film. Henson's children, Lisa and Brian, are set to produce the sequel. And Scott Derrickson, best known for Doctor Strange, has signed on to direct. If I were you, I'd take precaution. Everyone's doing what they can in the face of COVID-19, including Belle Biv DeVoe. The R&B group and Jagged Edge are headlining the premiere of the Garage Concert Series, streaming Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Tickets are $2.99, with the money going to COVID-19 relief. Head to FunkFestTV.com for details. You're very lucky, Simon. For having the world's most perfect, accepting parents, supportive friends. For some of us, it's not that easy. Love, Simon 
Woman is now a multiverse. The 2018 movie, based on a novel, has now led to the streaming series Love, Victor, about a high school student adjusting to a new city and school, family issues, and figuring out his identity. Love, Victor debuts on Hulu June 19th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I-27, 66 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, SpaceX is set to launch two American astronauts into space later today. We have a preview of this historic event. Plus, when it comes to saving money, you have to have good spending habits. Still ahead, some easy steps you can take to manage your finances more effectively. Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. It feels great out there right now, but this afternoon, Mike says, be aware. Yeah, especially northeast of San Antonio, um, actually San Antonio and northeast of there, I should say. We've got some very pleasant morning right now. Some clouds out there, very nice temperatures, actually a little bit on the below normal side, mid to lower 60s, some 50s in the hill country, and the humidity really is not bad either, especially for this time of year. A little bit higher on Stinson going south toward Pleasanton, but I mean, dew points in the low 60s and 50s, that will take that any time this time of year. It's going to be a really nice day as well, except for the mold, which yesterday's reading was still very, very high, although, although it did come down from the previous day's reading. We're at 16,000 plus, and we'll see temperatures getting up to 83 at noon, 90 for a high with mostly sunny skies. Now, late afternoon and then dinner time and the evening hours, we're going to start to see some pretty good thunderstorms developing up to the north and to the northeast, and some of those could be on the severe side. As a matter of fact, Storm Prediction Center does have the enhanced risk, so on a scale of one to five, that's a number three. So that's a pretty good shot for something to become strong to severe. New Braunfels, San Marcos up toward Austin, portions of the Hill Country, a good chunk of northern Kendall County up in toward Gillespie County, and then off to the east, San Antonio. And uh, parts of the Hill Country and off to the east are under the slight risk. But hot, large hail is going to be the biggest threat with this and high winds. Now, of course, an isolated tornado is possible a small one, but not very likely. Like I said, it's going to be large hail that is the biggest threat. So that's going to be tonight, this evening and tonight, maybe one or two of them tomorrow. And then weekend is actually looking better than it did earlier this week. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Thank you, Mike. And folks, as we take a look at the map, still no uh, problems out there on the roadway. So we have no accidents. Let's move over to Transguide. Take a look at the couple of the roadways there. Highway 90, Lackland. Still no increase in the traffic just yet, but a few more vehicles there. 410 at Highway 151. As we move over to 35 at 1604, you can see starting to get a little bit more steady stream on 1604 up on that far northeast side, but no problems here. 281 at Nakoma. Leslie. Thank you very much. Well, the city of San Antonio is offering a healthy and helpful hand to small business owners. It's handing out supplies aimed to help them avoid troubles with the coronavirus. Katrina Weber's live at the Alamo Dome where it's all set to happen this morning and it looks like things are all set there. Are you noticing anyone already taking advantage of the offer? Yeah, things are all set up. Uh, mostly what I've seen here so far, though, are news crews and security guards. Now, if you take a look, you'll notice that this setup looks a lot like what we saw when the San Antonio Food Bank was giving away food to people. Well, this, uh, this is not exactly that. We don't see the long lines of early arrivers. The city calls this the Greater Safer Together Supply Pickup Day. And the recipients this time around are small business owners who do business in the city of San Antonio. Now, as the title implies, what will be on the table for them are supplies. Each one will get a touch-free thermometer, two gallons of hand sanitizer, and face masks. All of these designed to help them prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Now, this is not exactly an open event because everyone who is on the receiving end this time around had to sign up in advance. So you can't just show up here and, and get those supplies. In fact, uh, none of the material that we have received so far even tells us what time exactly this starts. We have heard from people here at 9 o'clock, but again, uh, all of those people who are on the receiving end have been given that information. Uh, now, what we do know is that the uh, volunteers have been asked to arrive starting in about a half hour from now, and it looks like maybe a couple of them have shown up so far. Reporting live at the Alamo Dome, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers need your help finding a suspect involved in a robbery on the south side at a restaurant around May 11th at 7 p.m. SAPD says a man walked into a subway in the 1500 block of Pleasanton Road, threatened an employee at the register, and demanded cash. 
Police say he got away with the money. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get up to $5,000 if the information you provide leads to an arrest. Well, space flight back in the spotlight for a historic journey. This afternoon, two NASA astronauts are set to blast off from American soil for the first time in years. And you can watch live coverage right here on KSAT, KSAT.com, starting today at 3.15. CNN's Daryl Forges has more from the space coast of Florida. The countdown is on for SpaceX Crew Dragon to take to the stars. It's the first ever crewed mission for SpaceX and the first from U.S. soil to enter Earth's orbit since NASA retired the space shuttle program in 2011. The two astronauts at the helm, Colonel Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley. We've longed to be a part of a, a test mission, a test space flight, and Doug and I are lucky enough to get that opportunity. NASA partnered with Elon Musk's privately owned company to build and design the spacecraft. If the mission is successful, this will be the first commercially built aircraft to carry Americans to the International Space Station. That's good. While the excitement is brewing for the big day, the pandemic's impact looms. COVID did uh, drive some changes in how we were conducting our operations and preparing for this mission. We've been tested at least twice so far, and uh, rumor has it we might be tested again before we go. The Kennedy Space Center is closed to visitors. NASA is encouraging people to watch the launch from home. Even with the impact of COVID-19, this space team is determined to launch themselves into history books. Where there's a will, there's a way, and there's been will to make this happen, and we're just proud to be a part of it. In Titusville, Florida, I'm Daryl Forges. Also making headlines this morning, while mosquitoes can transmit a variety of diseases, it doesn't seem COVID-19 is one of them. The World Health Organization says there's no evidence so far that the coronavirus spreads through mosquito bites. COVID-19, a respiratory virus that spreads mostly person to person, it's usually through droplets released when an infected person coughs or sneezes. Well, as the weather gets warmer and you spend more time outside, health officials say be on the lookout for ticks. Yeah. These little pests carry Lyme disease and other illnesses that can be deadly if left untreated. To protect yourself from ticks, do a full body check once you're inside. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention also recommends showering within two hours to reduce the risk of Lyme disease. Those little buggers are ugly. They are, and they can cause quite a problem. I had a family member get Lyme disease. Oh, seriously? From, from mm -hmm. Wow, and I know it can let, the effects can linger for a long they can, time. They can, yeah. It's nothing to laugh about for sure. 537, 66 degrees. Still ahead, looking for easy ways to save money? We're going to take a look at things that you can do right now to better manage your money. Plus, several officers up in Minneapolis have been fired after a suspect dies in police custody. We'll have the latest next. And uh, taking you outside once again with live cam. Nice start to your Wednesday morning. The end is going to be a whole different ballgame. Five forty. Welcome back on your Wednesday morning. A tense standoff overnight between protesters and police up in Minneapolis. Demonstrators demanding justice for George Floyd, who died after a police officer was seen kneeling right on his neck. We want to warn you, the video you're about to see can be difficult to watch. Several officers involved have now been fired. ABC's Kenneth Moten has that story. Overnight growing outrage in Minneapolis over the death of a black man in police custody. Thousands of demonstrators taking to the streets, blocking intersections as police use tear gas to push back the crowds. So many others marching peacefully, chanting, I can't breathe, while demanding justice for George Floyd. A video camera captured the final moments of Floyd's life Monday night. The 46-year-old was seen on the ground in handcuffs with a police officer's knee on his neck. His nose is bleeding. About five minutes into the video, Floyd appears to lose consciousness. EMTs arrive on the scene and check for a pulse while the officer's knee remains on his neck. An ambulance then takes Floyd to the hospital where he's pronounced dead. They could have tased him, they could have mazed him. Instead, they would they put their knee in his neck and just sat on him and didn't care at all. Police say Floyd was unarmed and suspected of trying to pass a forged check at a store while appearing to be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Adding Floyd resisted officers, they handcuffed him and noted he appeared to be suffering medical distress. We understand that there may be other factors that are involved, but bottom line, the reasonable restrictions or whatever you want to call it, the force that was used is very unreasonable last night. This morning, the FBI is investigating the case and four police officers involved in the incident 
have been fired. Being black in America should not be a death sentence. This officer failed in the most basic human sense. Floyd's longtime roommate says he found out he was dead when he saw the video on social media. I recognized his voice and then I heard, uh, you know, I just recognized his features and stuff like that. So I was kind of shocked. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 542, 66 degrees. Up next, financial experts have some suggestions to help you manage your money by creating better habits. By 45, sometimes it's hard to build good money habits, but uh, they can benefit you in the long run if you stick to them. Digital journalist Ivan Adetta has some ways that you can do that in this week's Money It's Personal. I know, I know. Every week I give you some tips on how you can improve your finances, but those tips won't be effective if you don't make a habit out of them. So, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau has some tips to help you manage your money by creating better habits. First, only apply for credit when you need it. A good credit score is important for your financial well-being. So, one way to get and keep a good score is to only apply for the credit you need. Next, you're entitled to a free credit report every 12 months. So, it's ideal to set up an annual reminder to be up to date and spot any potential errors that may be hurting your credit score. The CFPB also suggests setting up bank alerts to notify you of your checking account balance at the end of the week or if your balance gets too low. This can protect you from incurring any overdraft fees. If you have a financial emergency and you can't make the bills this month, act fast and call your creditors. Missing a bill payment may have negative financial impacts, so it's best to call your lenders or creditors before your due date to see what your options are. Lastly, when you're shopping for a loan, get quotes from at least three lenders. The CFPB says one of the best ways to save money on a loan is to shop around and get estimates to compare terms and fees. I'm Ivan Herrera. To see more stories like this, watch KSET News at 9, Monday through Friday. Amtrak staring down the tracks at a tough year and says it needs another $1.5 billion from the U.S. government. It's on top of the billion it got in April. Amtrak says ridership and revenue are down 95% compared to a year ago. They're also planning to cut the workforce by at least 20%. Boeing is also looking to cut jobs. The airplane maker says its first phase of layoffs will start this week with 2,500 workers who volunteered. And all Boeing says it will trim its workforce by 16,000. That's about 10% of total employees. 547, 66 degrees. Let's check on the roadways once again. Marcus, what's happening? Well, still no problems out there on the roadways. So as you can see this map behind me, all in the green. Now a little bit of slowdowns along Highway 16 between 410 and 1604, but we do have a number of uh, traffic lights in that area also. 35 at FM 1103, no problems there all the way to uh, north or south, all the way to FM 3009. Take a look at 35 at Schwab Road. Folks are moving swiftly this morning on those nice dry roads in 410 Equilibra, no problem. 35 and FM 42 looks pretty good. Mike? Thank you, sir. Hey, before we get to the weather, of course, you can still adopt pets here in San Antonio. And here's a look at, oh, look at some of the pets at the San Antonio Humane Society ready for adoption. This is Socks, an American Terrier, American Pitbull mix. One-year-old, beautiful, adventurous little girl. And this is Riona, a one-year-old sweet little girl. She's a curious little kitty. And this is Gracie and Grayson, four-year-old terrier, Staffordshire mix, bull mix, and they're available together. To learn more about the adoption process, just go to their website. The shelter is doing wellness clinics at both the shelter locations at the Brooks Bay Neuter Clinic. That's Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and Saturdays, 8 a.m. to noon. They have services like vaccinations, flea prevention, heartworm prevention. Go to sahumane.org slash events for more information. You can also donate needed items via their blue bin located outside the shelter's front door 4804 Fredericksburg Road 210 226 7461 for more information. Look at that little baby there. And of course, their uh, Amazon wish list. Don't forget about that. All right, here's a great view. 
clear skies. Oh my goodness gracious. What a beautiful picture. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. We're going to have a good looking day. Good looking uh, start this morning. Very pleasant. 66 degrees in town, about four below normal. Some 50s in the hill country. Humidity is pretty comfortable as well. A little higher down around Stinson Pleasanton, but you know, you get these uh, dew points to measure moisture in the atmosphere. 50s and low 60s this time of year. That's a gift, definitely. Got this huge low up here to the uh, north of us. And with that counterclockwise spin, that's what's taking these little disturbances and throwing them down here. And some of those can, they almost sometimes pop up out of nowhere, almost like what happened yesterday evening when that lone storm cell popped up on the uh, north side by the airport and off to the northeast did produce some pretty good winds and a little bit of small hail. And then later on this afternoon, we do have uh, a couple of more disturbances moving on in here. So most of the day, we're going to have a lot of sunshine. And then by late in the afternoon, close to dinner time, we start to see some of these thunderstorms developing, and that will be the case in through the evening hours. And the majority of everything is going to be northeast, but that doesn't mean we still might see a couple of stronger thunderstorms even here in town. Some of that will linger into the early morning hours, and we'll have to see if that turns into one of those nighttime storm complexes that lingers into the morning hours, and they usually die down once the sun comes up. And then a uh, well, couple of showers are possible throughout the day, but then we may have a couple of more thunderstorms popping up later on tomorrow afternoon, and perhaps some of those linger into early Friday morning. Now, Storm Prediction Center definitely upped the uh, the risk to an enhanced risk for New Braunfels, San Marcos going up I-35 in toward Austin, a good chunk of the Hill Country, Kendall County, and then off to the east. And like I said, very good chance uh, for strong to severe storms. Large hail is gonna be the biggest threat, high winds. An isolated weak tornado is possible, although not very likely. And then the yellow area is the slight risk. So it would be the orange would be considered number three on a scale of one to 10. So fairly decent chance for some of those storms to become strong to severe. And then tomorrow, we've got a marginal risk around most of the area because of one or two of those stray thunderstorms coming down that northwesterly flow. All right, around the country, a lot of rain to the east of us, but all eyes are focused on uh, Cape Canaveral and the Kennedy Space Center. There are a few showers as of right now. Latest report is that there's about a 60% chance of good enough weather to launch the, uh, the SpaceX rocket later on today, and it's scheduled to go up at 3.30 our time. And of course, we will have coverage here on KSAT. 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today up to 90. Good looking day, mostly sunny skies. Then some of those thunderstorms are going to be developing late this afternoon and tonight, especially up to the northeast. Some may linger into early tomorrow morning, and then maybe a stray storm tomorrow afternoon at 87 degrees. After that, fairly decent stretch of weather. A stray storm or two is possible, and uh, as of right now, Pretty good looking weekend. Well, we can't wait to see. Uh, we're hoping that this launch uh, is get pulled off today. It'd be a nice bit of good news for the nation, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. And Paul Hurley, the commander, mm -hmm. he was the one that landed the last space shuttle. He commanded that. That's so, right. And one program. You think they're nervous program. right now or just excited? A little bit of both? Probably a little bit of both. I yeah. think I read somewhere where they said it's not really nerves, but it's just the excitement, so like you said, of what's going on and the anticipation of it. So. You know what else is interesting? Of course, technology obviously evolves, but the evolution of the space suits too now, they're very sci-fi looking. They almost look like uh, from Christopher Nolan's Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey. They're very clean and yeah. low key. And even the throwback to 2001 Space Odyssey, mm -hmm. a little bit like that at times too. So uh, I, I read somewhere Elon Musk had a little bit of a hand in design. Well, that's not so. a big surprise. No. Not and the astronauts are going to be taking the launch pad in a Tesla. Of course they are. Of course they are. Yes. All right. So coverage here on KSAT, KSAT.com starting at 315 San Antonio time. Mike, thank you. Right now, 553, 66 degrees. Coming up next, as many are glad to finally be out of school for summer, we are going to tell you about one 13-year-old who just earned four college degrees. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, six, five, fireball two, daily four, seven, two, six, three, fireball one. And your cash five numbers, two, 13, 30, 32, 34. And we also have mega millions, 34, 52, 58, 59, 62. Mega ball was four with a mega player of three. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, we've got the latest on the breaking news overnight, police and protesters clashing in Minneapolis after the death of a black man while in police custody. The shocking 10-minute video shows George Floyd handcuffed 
on the ground saying he can't breathe. George Floyd's sister is joining us live to talk about it this morning right here on GMA. In case you missed it, a 13 year old California whiz kid just earned not one, not two, not three, but four different degrees. Jack Rico just became the youngest graduate of Fullerton College. He earned four associate's degrees in two years time. And of course, he's not stopping there. The pint sized prodigy is set to attend University of Nevada on a full ride scholarship. Way to go, kiddo. Three church leaders in Northern Ireland, Ireland decided to perform this Irish jig at the end of a live stream mass. Check it out. It's lift the spirits of parishioners at St. Peter's Church in Lurgan. The energetic display shows that while church is currently closed to the public, the jig is not up yet. Not just yet. It is a little less than three minutes till six. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio. Healthcare costs in the U.S. are rising each and every year. With over 30 million people under the age of 65 uninsured, it may be hard to get coverage you need and save money. We'll take a look at some resources out there that can help pay some of your costs. Every little bit helps. Trans Guide, there's traffic at 281 and winding way. More folks making their way into work. They're early on this Wednesday morning. We'll get a time saver traffic update and Mike is talking about those severe weather chances by dinner time tonight. Details ahead. New this morning, San Antonio police need your help finding a 10 month old baby girl. I'm Sarah Costa coming up in just a bit what she looks like and where she was last seen. At least 14 states seeing a growing number of COVID-19 cases. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking you outside with live cam, it's a nice start to your Wednesday morning, but boy, are we in for another chance of a show from Mother Nature this afternoon. Mike has details. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey there, good morning. It's Wednesday, May 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Don't be deceived by the nice start to your Wednesday, right, Mike? Because this afternoon it's going to get a little bit dicey. Yeah, we shouldn't be surprised if we see perhaps um, some severe weather watches or warnings later on. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a possibility, especially the, the greatest threat is going to be the further northeast to go. So up around Austin, a much better threat than here in San Antonio. But uh, even, you know, New Braunfels, you're definitely under the gun later on today. Right now, yeah, it's a pleasant start. We do have some clouds out there and temperatures are really comfortable. I mean, we've got 50s in the hill country, 66 in town. That's four below normal and also the humidity is not bad. We've got uh, it's kind of nice out there, especially for this time of year, having such a relatively low humidity for the time being. Mold, however, is very high. Now that did drop down from the previous day's reading, but still 16,000 plus. Temperatures this morning are going to uh, not warm up nicely. We, like I said, have some clouds this morning. We'll see plenty of sunshine throughout the rest of today. We'll make it up into the uh, low 80s by noon and then top off with a high temperature up to 90. And again, a lot of sunshine today. Humidity is not going to be bad, but then it's going to be late this afternoon and tonight when we start to see some uh, strong to potentially severe storms that will be developing. And again, the greatest threat is going to be further up to the northeast. Storm Prediction Center does have an enhanced risk, and that includes a good chunk of Kendall, Kamal Counties, New Braunfels, and San Marcos going up toward Austin, and then further up to the northeast, and then, uh, say, Gonzales over towards San Antonio, and then up into parts of the hill country has that slight risk. So to put it on the scale, marginal, the green area, a one on a scale of five. The orange area is three on a scale of one to five. So a pretty good chance. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat and high winds. A small isolated tornado can't be completely ruled out. So this is going to be later on this evening as well as into tonight. Weekend forecast. Actually, things have changed. It's not looking bad. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Marcus Trujillo. And you haven't had a lot to talk about this morning so far. It's been nice and quiet so far this morning. So uh, hopefully it'll stay that way for the rest of the morning commute because uh, that's going to be a doozy this afternoon. Right now, let's take a look. This is 1604, 35 area. No problems here. 21 Nakoma. North and southbound lanes are starting to pick up in volume. As you can see, southbound lanes of 21 really starting to get in the way right now. Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. The San Antonio police are looking for a 10 month old girl and they need the community's help to find her. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with more. So where was the child last seen, Sarah? 
Good morning, Mark and Leslie. That child was last seen on the far northwest side, according to police, possibly with her mother. But take a look at your screen if you recognize this child or have seen her. The baby girl's name is Rhiannon Sullivan. She is 10 months old. Police believe she may be with her biological mother, who was recently ordered to turn over Rhiannon to Child Protective Services. She weighs about 20 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes with a medium complexion. She was last seen in the 6200 block of Ridge Lake, like I said earlier, on the northwest side. She has straight hair that goes to her ears and was last seen wearing a pink onesie. If you have seen or may know where she is, you are asked to call the Police Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660. And of course, you can find this information right now on KSAT.com and find her picture. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. SAPD also looking for this missing 16-year-old. This is Alexandra Brianna Martinez. She was last seen at the Domino's Pizza at Bandera and Culebra, where she works. Police believe she is with one of her co-workers. They say she's 5'7", with brown eyes and black straight shoulder length hair. Call police at the same number, 210-207-7660, if you have any information. Governor Greg Abbott expanded the amount of businesses and services that can reopen across the state of Texas. Starting today, driver education classes and food courts and malls are allowed to open. On Friday, water parks will be allowed to open, and recreational sports programs for adults can start Sunday. You can also reserve overnight camping spaces at all Texas state parks from June to September this morning. Metro Health wants you to take a survey about COVID-19 in our community. The survey designed to gather information on coronavirus symptoms, testing, and social distancing behavior across San Antonio. The results will be broken down by zip code. You can take the survey online through August 3rd, and we have a link to take it right now on KSAT.com. The survey is available in English, Spanish, and other languages as well. Seniors at Southside ISD may not be getting the graduation ceremony they thought they would get. Southside ISD had planned to hold a virtual graduation ceremony today through Friday, but those plans were put on hold at the last minute. In a letter to graduates and parents, Southside ISD says they consulted with local public health officials and the Texas Education Agency before making this decision. The district cites concerns of COVID-19 for the discussion, but it's unclear how those concerns related to a virtual experience. Information on future plans expected to be released on a later date. Today, Secretary, uh, Texas Secretary of State Ruth Hughes released checklists for both voters and those conducting elections, laying out the minimum recommended health protocols. Those include maintaining physical distance from other voters, voting curbside if you're exhibiting COVID-19 symptoms, and bringing your own hand sanitizer to polling locations. Election workers are recommending to extend voting hours and disaffecting any items that come into contact with voters. County Judge Nelson Wolf says Bear County was already planning to take these measures. He also says things are still up in the air right now since there are ongoing legal battles over the expansion of mail-in voting here in Texas. If you receive an envelope with a debit card in the mail, do not throw it away. It could be your stimulus payment. Last week, the Treasury Department announced it would issue about 4 million payments on debit cards and mail them out on an economic impact payment card. One local man is telling everyone, be careful. He almost threw his away. It looked like an ordinary um, bank ad for a, with a generic card in it. And when I felt it, I was just going to throw it away and like I usually do, and then I said, you know what, I'll open it. Ended up being the stimulus money. The card will arrive in a plain envelope from Money Network Cardholder Services. Your name will be on the back of the card, and it will be issued from Metabank. A San Antonio woman is hoping more churches use their parking lot to save resting areas for evicted families living out of their vehicles. Molly Wright came up with the idea when she was homeless and living out of her car about eight months ago. She spoke with the city and local pastor Jimmy Robles of Last Chance Ministries, and her plan is coming to fruition. I was being harassed and moved over everywhere by police and there was no place for me to stay. Um, it was just, it was difficult. I couldn't find any relief anywhere. And so I really could have used a safe parking lot where I could stay overnight in a safe space. So people can park their cars at the Last Chance Ministries lot from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Right along with a team of volunteers will be there to help those in need. Meanwhile, Mayor Ron Nierberg says the Department of Human Services is coming up with a pilot program to address this need 
as eviction proceedings resume. Well, as states continue to open up and Americans become increasingly eager to get outside, the U.S. death toll from COVID-19 is closing in on 100,000. That's true, but there are also signs of progress in the war on the virus. ABC's Inez Dela Quatera has the latest. Good morning. At least 14 states are seeing a growing number of COVID-19 cases as the president and his 2020 opponent debate the use of face masks. This morning, new concerns after scenes like these over the weekend. If you don't want to catch it, then stay home. From beaches to pool parties and busy boardwalks, many Americans close together, many without masks. It seems like the younger generation doesn't have any fear here. The number of cases now rising in at least 14 states, but there are also signs of progress. In New York, Long Island beginning to reopen, leaving New York City as the only region in the state still shut down. Nevada now moving into phase two, casinos scheduled to reopen at the beginning of June. Sports also starting to get back to business. The NHL announcing plans to restart by skipping the regular season and going straight to playoffs. Games will be closed off to everyone except the teams and a small support staff. Dr. Deborah Burke stressing. Social distancing is absolutely critical. And if you can't social distance and you're outside, you must wear a mask. And today, Disney will present its plans to reopen Walt Disney World in Orlando. Disneyland Shanghai opened earlier this month with a limited number of guests and social distancing measures in place. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 10 minutes past the hour, 66 degrees. J.K. Rowling is offering a new children's book for free see how you can read the latest in the Harry Potter universe. And as of right now, the SpaceX launch still a go in Florida after the break. More about the astronauts who will head to space from American soil for the first time in a very long time. And taking you outside with live cam on this Wednesday morning. Thanks for being with us, everybody. An update on traffic and another check on your forecast coming up. Six fourteen. Welcome back to GMSA. Today has the potential to be a historic day in the United States. It'll be the first time a private company launches American astronauts into space. And if the weather permits, it could be the first time in a decade that American astronauts will head to space from Cape Canaveral, Florida. James Sparvero from our sister station WKMG in Orlando introduces us to the two astronauts who will be on board the SpaceX rocket. Good morning. The sun will rise today at Kennedy Space Center with the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon capsule in the launch position. The Demo 2 mission astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley will wake up about six hours from liftoff, which is scheduled at 4.33 Florida time. Benkin and Hurley will put on the sleek SpaceX spacesuits about 12.30 this afternoon. These are the same futuristic suits they put on in their dress rehearsal Saturday. New images from the astronauts shows a photo from their crew quarters as NASA's administrator and deputy administrator wishing them good luck yesterday from quarantine. Another astronaut who knows this crew very well and has even been to space with one of them shares his perspective how Bob and Doug might be feeling right now ahead of making human spaceflight history again. Why are Bob and Doug not afraid right now? First of all, you're so excited and your excitement kind of overwhelms any sense of fear. Flying a new vehicle is their reason to live <laughs> almost. Right? This is what it's all about for them. No major technical problems reported by SpaceX or NASA ahead of liftoff. Again, 433 local time, weather permitting. That's still the major issue. The return of human spaceflight from America, the first mission of its kind in nine years, and the first time ever a U.S. sitting president will visit Kennedy Space Center on the day of an astronaut launch. At NASA's Kennedy Space Center, I'm James Sparvero, KSAT 12 News. So if the weather is incorporating with the uh, launch, you can watch it right here on KSAT. Tune at 3.15 this afternoon to watch the countdown and liftoff. And if you are out and about today, we'll also be streaming it live on KSAT.com. Just search for SpaceX on our website to find the link. Right now it's 6.16. Check on the roadways, Marcus. What's happening? Well, right now as you take a look at the map, you can see... We're doing great as far as your commute goes. Dry roads, no accidents, construction has been picked up. All you can ask, the only, the only other thing you could ask for is uh, maybe having the day off. As you take a look at the roadways there, Highway 90, or 281 rather, Nakoma, no problems there. But also starting to get heavier traffic on the southbound main lanes of 21 up there at Winding Way. So that's from headed from 604 back over towards the airport. Here in the downtown area, 35 of Florida, no problems.
Thank you very much, Marcus. Back to the SpaceX. Yes, sir. Being launched from Launch Complex 39A. Okay. Yeah. All the uh, all but one manned Apollo mission. Okay. Apollo 11 launched from there. The first Columbia, the first space shuttle launched from there back in 1981. So. Oh, I mean, it, this is a historic oh, day. Yeah, it is. So yeah. Look at that smile on Mike's face. Like yes, a little kid. I mean, I, I was all into the Apollo stuff when I was a little kid, so this is pretty neat. So. Awesome. Can't wait to see it. We hope mm -hmm. the launch goes off as planned. Yeah, the weather looks okay for the launch in Florida. Well, about 60% chance. As of Yesterday, it was not looking as good, and now mm -hmm. they've kind of upped the, the chances for uh, good weather for the launch. Good. Which, again, what, 3.30 right. our time? Yes, so. 3.30 our time. Right. Okay. Uh, first of all, our weather, and look at that. That was out by Wagner High School looking toward the east. Excuse me, looking to the west, I beg your pardon, this was east of that storm. That's the one that popped up late yesterday afternoon over there by the airport. And again, I mean, elsewhere, it was just beautiful blue skies. And that one lone cell popped up out there by the airport. And that was about uh, dinner time or so and produced some pretty good winds. Even a little bit of a small hail was reported with that. And then it just moved on out and fizzled on out. And, and that's the kind of the weather pattern that we're in. I'll explain more on that in a second. Temperatures are really pleasant this morning. We're in the low to mid 60s. Uh, 69 right now is one of the warm spots there at Randolph as well as in Pleasanton. And the humidity for the most part, a little bit higher down around Stinson, pleasant and being reported, but it's pretty good, especially for this time of year when you step outside this morning. We have got this big low. You can see that counterclockwise spin centered now uh, right around looks like Oklahoma City, and that's what's keeping us in this northwesterly flow in the atmosphere and little disturbances come screaming on in here on that northwesterly flow and they can get pretty potent and that's what happened yesterday that one little lone cell of course in the morning there were a few of those thunderstorms that popped up uh, right around Medina Lake and then they fizzle on out same one yesterday afternoon now this afternoon we do have the chance for more showers and thunderstorms the better chance is going to be further up to the northeast so this is about late afternoon almost dinner time and we'll start to see some of those storms developing up there to the northeast and everything will primarily work its way then down to the south east. There'll be a few of those around here and this is going to last into the evening hours. And then the question is whether it lasts overnight. That's what sometimes these storm systems do. They, they form their own little mini storm complexes and they exist overnight and die out about sunrise the following day. So we'll have to watch that tomorrow morning as well. Then in the afternoon tomorrow, there may be a couple of more thunderstorms trying to uh, develop out there to the west. So that's going to up the odds again for maybe a, a strong to severe storm. But today is the best chance to see something strong or severe, especially uh, New Braunfels going up to the northeast up I-35. Good chunk of the hill country. Good portion of Kendall County up in toward Fredericksburg and then off to the east. So scale of one to five, this would be a number three. So very good chance that some of those storms are going to be severe. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat today or this evening, as well as high winds, but especially the large hail. An isolated tornado, and think back to Sunday night, it's not a big supercell type system, but you get those small little spin-ups possible. So that's also an outside chance, a small isolated tornado. All right, as far as Florida weather is concerned, a couple of showers, I mean, they get rain all the time popping up there in Florida, but as of right now, obviously a little bit of rain around the, uh, the Cape there, but uh, later on this afternoon, as I mentioned, there is about a 60% mm, chance as of right now that they're going to have good enough weather to launch the, uh, the SpaceX. 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, a lot of sunshine thrown in throughout the day, really a comfortable day, but then things are going to potentially turn ugly by dinner time in the evening hours, especially up to the northeast, San Antonio northeast of there. 90 for a high temperature today, so that's a normal high tomorrow couple of uh, stray showers and storms are possible and then um, weekend right now is looking pretty good. Temperatures about 90 and a lot of sunshine around there. But be on the lookout later on this evening. Not a bad morning so far though. No, no, it's really pleasant out there this morning. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. So Six, 621, 66 degrees. America's number one movie at the box office is a low budget horror film that's become an unlikely hit. Learn which one it is in your GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. Thank you for being a friend. 
I have no idea what's in Princess Toast, but thanks to this USP seal, I know exactly what's in my Nature Made gummies. Nature Made has the first gummies verified by USP, a nonprofit organization that sets purity and potency standards. Now, Semperica Trio simplifies protection. Ticks and fleas? See ya! Heartworm disease? No way. Semperica Trio is the first chewable that delivers all this protection. And Semperica Trio is demonstrated safe for puppies. It's simple. Go with Semperica Trio. This drug class has been associated with neurologic adverse reactions, including seizures, used with caution in dogs with a history of these disorders. Protect him with all your heart. Semperica Trio. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's the number one movie in America, but you've probably never heard of it. Hey. What's going on? With so many theaters shuttered and so many movie companies holding their releases, the independent horror flick The Wretched has taken the box office crown three weeks in a row, making $600,000. Don't let her in. Overnight, GMA caught up with the stunned filmmakers. It doesn't make any sense, is what. <laughs> Yeah, I think the furthest we ever thought it might go is like, maybe someday this will be on a streaming platform. To have such a large amount of people see it in such a short period of time, uh, you know, it's nerve wracking at the same time. You're like, I just hope they liked it. <laughs> and coming up at 7 a.m., we'll take a closer look at what's driving the Wretched's box office success. Believe it or not, it's the drive-in theater. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Amazon is set to increase its commitment to automation to do that. The online retail giant reportedly talks to buy a driverless vehicle company called Zooks. Analysts say that completing the deal would help Amazon manage rising shipping costs. Google plans to reopen a limited number of its offices after the July 4th weekend. The company's CEO says returning to brick and mortar locations will be optional for the rest of the year. Workers who stay home will get a $1,000 spend for equipment. Okay. Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has published a new children's book, and it's free. It's called The Ichabog, and it'll be available in seven weekly installments on the website, theichabog.com. She wrote it years ago while working on Harry Potter, but does not connect back to the original series. Your time now is 626, and it's 66 degrees. There were protests overnight up in Minneapolis had one of the city's police officers uh, after, after, after four officers were filed, fired in connection with the death of an African-American man in custody. We will have the latest. Healthcare costs continue to increase, and that makes it tough for many Americans to afford. In our next half hour, we're gonna learn how you can subsidize your healthcare costs. And time saver traffic coming up, we'll be right back. The city of San Antonio wants to make sure business owners have the tools they need to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you about a giveaway that's happening today. It's Wishlist Wednesday, which means KSAC Community is highlighting a nonprofit that needs your help. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. How you can help out San Antonio Threads. And it is quiet now, but things could uh take a turn for the worse as we head into the evening hours. Mike is talking about the possibility of some severe weather in parts of the KSAT 12 viewing area, and he will tell you which part's coming up. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is May 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Feels nice out there this morning, as you were saying. We'll get more on that coming up. How are the roadways looking? So far, no issues out there. Uh, everyone's moving along nicely out there, so no delays in anybody's travel times. And the best news is, right now, no accidents on the highways. We like, uh, we, we like this shot of the downtown yeah. skyline, Mike. I know, that's beautiful there. And you can see uh, kind of a little bit of glow off uh, to the right-hand side, off to the east a little bit. Uh, humidity is fairly pleasant this morning. Temperatures are not bad. 66 here in town. Normal low is 70. We've got a couple of 50s out in portions of the hill country. And some dew point temperatures, you know, the measurement moisture in the atmosphere. 60s is always kind of that threshold when you start to feel it. We're only at 62, got some 50s in the hill country, so it is uh, pretty nice out there. Mold, however, of course, is sky high from all the rain that we had been having, although this did drop down and from the previous day's reading, and hopefully it goes down when the updated count comes out later on this morning. So we do still have some clouds out there. It is pleasant, mostly sunny skies today, nice looking day. Then about dinner time, 
up to the north and northeast. We're going to start to see some storms develop, and some of those could be on the uh, strong to severe side. Tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, upper 80s. A stray storm, maybe a strong storm is possible. And then we get into the weekend. Now, earlier in the week, forecast for the weekend had looked like we were still going to have some rain chances around here, you know, maybe a stray one or two. But overall, I think the weekend is definitely improving, and we won't be just blazingly hot this weekend, just seasonably hot. Storm Prediction Center does have an enhanced risk for strong to severe storms. New Braunfels going up I-35, up into portions of the Hill Country, a good chunk of uh, Kendall County, and then off to the east. Scale of one to five, this would be a three. So, like I said, a good chance for some of those storms to be strong to severe. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat with this. And then high winds also. An isolated small tornado is possible, although not very likely. And this is going to start about dinner time. And then storms are going to be working their way down from north to uh, to the south and to the southeast throughout the course of the evening. More on that, a closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Yeah, it has been... Really, really quiet this morning. It's been nice. Uh, we have nice weather out there, mm -hmm. nice roadways. Why don't hey. I take the rest okay. of the day off and let them handle it? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, folks, still no accidents on the highways as we take a look at TransGuide cameras. They're uh, 35 FM 1103, no problems all the way down through FM 3009. You can see more than enough room out there on the roadways, and even 35 Schwab still looking pretty good. Right now, as we take a look, uh, I-10 and Medical, travel in both directions, still running smoothly. Mark and Leslie. Marcus, thank you, sir. Talk to you again in a few minutes. Health and safety are the end goals of a giveaway going on this morning. City of San Antonio handing out supplies to local businesses to help slow the spread of the coronavirus. Katrina Weber's live at the Alamo Dome, the site of the giveaway. So do you know about how all this is going to work out? Well, we have a pretty good idea. This is a drive through event, not unlike what the San Antonio Food Bank did with its food distribution. Uh, uh, also like that, this also required people to sign up in advance. We're told that this event starts at 9, but already uh, we can see some of the volunteers have arrived. Also arriving are some of those supplies that the city will be giving away. Well, the main difference between this and the food bank giveaways is the people on the receiving end this time are small business owners who do business in San Antonio. The city calls this event Great Together Safer Supply Pickup Day. And as the name implies, supplies are being given out here. Each business owner will get a contact free thermometer, two gallons of hand sanitizer, and masks, all of the tools for avo avoiding coronavirus troubles. All of the recipients today, again, had to pre-register and meet certain requirements. So this is not exactly open to just anyone. It, uh, those people did have to show up or did have to sign up in advance. So you can't just walk up or, in this case, drive up and uh, be handed out anything here. Reporting live at the Alamo Dome, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The San Antonio Police Department asking for your help finding a man who is accused of robbing a Subway restaurant. Police say the man you're about to see walked into the subway of corner of Pleasanton and West South Cross on the evening of May 11th. They say he threatened an employee at the register and demanded money, then ran off with cash. If you recognize him, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. More than 62,000 doctors and nurses have gotten sick from taking care of COVID-19 patients around the United States. That's according to a new report out by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It's a big jump from the more than 9,200 that the CDC reported back in mid-April. At least 291 health care workers have died from the virus. The CDC believes the current numbers are possibly, though, an undercount because many of the reported cases don't state if the patient worked in health care. CDC says antibody tests used to determine if people have been infected with COVID-19 could end up being wrong half the time. Antibody tests look for evidence of immune response to infection. All the antibodies can be detected in some people within the first week of the onset of illness. CDC says the tests are not accurate enough used to use to make important policy decisions. The CDC also updated its advice for people using public transportation and ride shares. Most of the recommendations shouldn't come as a surprise. You should wash your hands, try not to touch frequently touch surfaces, open the windows when possible to improve air circulation, and avoid using pool ride shares. The CDC also advises people to travel during non-peak hours and continue to stay at least six feet apart from others. In your morning headlines, a tense standoff overnight between protesters and police in Minneapolis. 
Officers in Rikier fired tear gas at people demanding justice for George Floyd. He died after an officer was seen kneeling on his neck. Four officers involved have been fired. ABC's Kenneth Moten has this story, and we need to warn you, the video is hard to watch. Overnight, growing outrage in Minneapolis over the death of a black man in police custody. Thousands of demonstrators taking to the streets, blocking intersections as police use tear gas to push back the crowds. So many others marching peacefully, chanting, I can't breathe, while demanding justice for George Floyd. A video camera captured the final moments of Floyd's life Monday night. The 46-year-old was seen on the ground in handcuffs with a police officer's knee on his neck. His nose is bleeding. About five minutes into the video, Floyd appears to lose consciousness. EMTs arrive on the scene and check for a pulse while the officer's knee remains on his neck. An ambulance then takes Floyd to the hospital where he's pronounced dead. They could have tased him. They could have maced him. Instead, they would they put their knee in his neck and just sat on him and didn't care at all. Police say Floyd was unarmed and suspected of trying to pass a forged check at a store while appearing to be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Adding Floyd resisted officers, they handcuffed him and noted he appeared to be suffering medical distress. We understand that there may be other factors that are involved, but bottom line, the reasonable restrictions or whatever you want to call it, the force that was used is very unreasonable last night. This morning, the FBI is investigating the case and four police officers involved in the incident have been fired. Being black in America should not be a death sentence. This officer failed in the most basic human sense. Floyd's longtime roommate says he found out he was dead when he saw the video on social media. I recognized his voice and then I heard, uh, you know, I just recognized his features and stuff like that. So I was kind of shocked. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Right now at 638, 66 degrees. Healthcare costs in the United States are rising every year. And with over 30 million people under the age of 65 uninsured, it may be hard to get the coverage you need and save money. 642, if you don't count the ER visits or doctor calls due to coronavirus, Americans visit the doctor four times a year on average. Meanwhile, people in Japan visit an average of 13 times a year. The top reason for the drastic difference is the price of health care, but there are resources, resources rather to help you afford it. RJ Marquez has details. Whether it's a pill for pain or your heart, blood pressure, mental health, one out of every two people takes a prescription drug and every pill you pop is like swallowing cash. You can save money on medicines by asking your provider to switch to generic over brand name drugs. Go to wellrx.com to compare prices. Also, check out online pharmacies, but always make sure they are certified. You can find out by looking for the official BIPPS logo. Often, clinic care is less expensive than at the hospital, which on average charges $2,000 for a one night stay. You can also save half on most dental work by going to a dental school. Blood pressure screenings can be done free at many pharmacies. The American Academy of Dermatology offers free skincare screenings at locations around the country as part of its Spot Me program. The National Breast Cancer Foundation is partnered with certain medical facilities to provide free mammograms, and the CDC provides cervical cancer screenings to low-income, uninsured, or underinsured women across America. Keep in mind, the American Healthcare Foundation offers free walking HIV testing at some clinics. R.J. Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Local nonprofits have been hit hard because of the pandemic. That's why KSAT Community highlights organizations in need for Wishlist Wednesday. Sarah Acosta joins us from home to tell us about San Antonio Threads. Hey there, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. Yeah, this week's Wishlist Wednesday is San Antonio Threads. It's a nonprofit that provides clothing to at risk teens and during the pandemic has been helping families with a lot of food supplies. So check out this nonprofit. It also provides essential for at-risk teens like toiletries and most recently a lot of food for those taking a hard hit during the pandemic. Teens who qualify choose complete outfits, new socks, underwear, bras, toiletries, shoes, and other seasonal items. San Antonio Threads provides a safe and nurturing, nurturing shopping experience for teens ages 12 to 21 who are homeless in the foster care system, in emergency situations, 
or are referred to to the nonprofit. So how can you can how can you help? You can help through donations and volunteering. Donations needed include non-perishable foods like cereal, breakfast bars, also toiletries like deodorant, toothpaste, body wash, feminine hygiene products, microwavable meals, and new packages of adult underwear. You can drop off these donations anytime, Monday through Friday, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 10,446 Centennial Street. That's on the city's north side near the airport. The group only accepts new clothing and new toiletries. So if you know a child or a family that could benefit from this nonprofit, you can find all those necessary links on how to refer them right now on ksat.com. And of course, you can find all this information on how you can donate also on ksat.com. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Let's check on the roadways once again. Any new accidents to report, Marcus? Right now, things still look great out there. There's 281 at Nakoma. You can see uh, north and southbound lanes running smoothly in there, 151, 410. That's where we had some overnight construction, but currently no issues. Moving on to, let's see, there we go, 35 at FM 3009. Traffic, or 11, 1103, all the way through FM 3009. Traffic's moving along nicely there. And then 35, 37, the interchange here in the downtown area. You can see travel in all four directions. No delays at this time. Well, that picture behind you gets better looking by the minute, Mike. Sunshine. Glancing off the uh, frost tower there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ar 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 it's not talk like a pirate day. It's Ar not. Ar no, stop. Everybody stop. Ar I don't even know what that was, that accent. Sorry, oh. go ahead. Y'all done? Made yeah. started. <laughs> and it's really comfortable, too, when you step outside. Temperatures uh -huh. are nice. Humidity is fairly pleasant. Mm -hmm. Late this afternoon, though, we're going to have to be on the lookout for some more uh, potentially okay. very strong storms. So, yeah, beautiful start this morning. And uh, temperatures are in the low to mid-60s, some 50s out in the hill country. And humidity is nice when you step outside. It's not like any sort of a you know wet towel slapping you in the face, anything like that. What we have going on, though, is this low, which is circulating right there around, say, Oklahoma City, and that's putting us in this northwesterly flow, which keeps us usually dry as opposed to, you know, getting the flow off the Gulf of Mexico. But this is getting these little uh, disturbances to slide down in here. It wraps those things around, and that's what then they can be pretty vigorous. And that's what is going to be producing some potentially severe storms later on this afternoon. So here's the uh, computer model. And throughout most of the day, it's going to be a good look of day. A lot of sunshine, pleasant, about normal temperatures after our little bit below normal start this morning. But then by roughly dinner time, we start to see some of those bigger thunderstorms developing. The majority of the strong to severe storms is going to be further up. The better chance to see anything strong is going to be further up to the north and to the northeast. However, a good chunk of the area is under the gun later on. And then the other question is, whether these hold together overnight, which sometimes these storm complexes do. They form those own mini little storm systems, if you will, and those can sometimes give us some pretty hefty rain and they last through about sunrise the following day. So we'll have to be on the lookout for that for tomorrow morning on GMSA, but it's later on this evening, obviously, when things are going to get fired up. And then tomorrow, a couple of more thunderstorms in this northwesterly flow are going to be possible, so we'll still have the chance for some to become strong. Friday, and then, again, dependent upon whether those do last overnight, so we'll have to watch out for that again, perhaps Friday morning. Today, we have uh, New Braunfels up to Austin and north of there under the enhanced risk, so that'd be a three on a scale of five, so pretty good chance for some of those to become uh, potentially severe. A large hail is going to be the biggest threats and then high winds can't rule out an isolated small tornado, kind of like what we had Sunday night. It's not very likely, but in these scenarios, you can get a small little tornado to spin up and then San Antonio up into the hill country and off to the east under the uh, slight risk. So a good chunk about the north, uh, north to northeastern half of our viewing area is under good risk for severe weather. So there's the upper low. And again, it's pulling those little disturbances down here that will eventually 
kind of move on out and that's why the weather is definitely going to improve. Now we could have a you know stray shower. It's not very likely as we go into the weekend, but this high is going to be building on in here, which a lot of times when that thing starts to move on in, that definitely heats us up. We are going to be up to about normal readings over the, uh, the weekend, and then that will continue to kind of linger around the area, so that'll keep us warm. But it looks like the uh, humidity is going to be coming on in here as we go on into the, uh, the first part of next week. But overall, the weekend is looking better as far as not as much uh, rain chance this weekend. 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature today up to 90 normal high. Good looking day, but then those thunderstorms are going to be developing dinner time into the evening hours. And some of those may last overnight into tomorrow morning. 87 degrees today, or excuse me, tomorrow with a stray storm possible. And then Friday through the weekend, again, it looks pretty good. Um, but it's tonight we have to be on the lookout for with some of those stronger storms. So having that enhanced risk, that's a very good odds that something's going to blow up later Make sure on. you have the app. And again, uh, hail and then high winds, biggest threats. We know you guys will have us covered. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. 650, 66 degrees. Well, golf is a favorite pastime for many folks, and to make it enjoyable, people are out at all hours of the night prepping the course. Join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we take a look at what the work, what work goes into golf courses while you are sleeping. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go, coming up right here on GMSA. San Antonio police need your help finding a 10 month old girl. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. Take a look at your screen to see if you've seen this child. The baby girl's name is Rianne and Sullivan. She is 10 months old. Police believe she may be with her biological mother who was recently ordered to turn over Rianne into Child Protective Services. She weighs about 20 pounds with brown hair and brown eyes with medium complexion. She was last seen in the 6200 block of Ridge Lake. She has straight hair that goes to her ears and was last seen wearing a pink onesie. If you have seen her or may know where she is, you are asked to call the missing persons unit at 210-207-7660. And you can find that information right now on KSAT.com. Reporting from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much. If the weather cooperates, you can watch the historic launch of the SpaceX rocket right here on KSAT 12 today. Tune in at 315 this afternoon to watch the countdown and liftoff. And if you are out and about today, we will also be streaming it live on KSAT.com. Just search for SpaceX on our website to find the link. Mike can hardly contain his glee. <laughs> right now it's 5 till 66 degrees. Literally, he's singing off on the side and he's not a good singer. Okay, let's check on the roadways. Right now, no problems there. 35, 37 the interchange. Take a look at FM 3009. Bright sunshine there coming over the horizon. Make sure you take your sunglasses with you to cut down on the glare. And I-10 there at 1604, looking great. Much better than if you're in the downtown area headed northbound on 35, because then that's what's going to be facing you. Mike? Yeah. Lots of uh, beautiful sunshine. It's a really nice morning. Temperatures are in the uh, 60s right now. A couple of 50s in parts of the hill country and throughout the rest of today, 83 at noon. A lot of sunshine, 90 for a high temperature, but it's going to be uh, late this afternoon. Dinner time, we'll start to see some of those stronger storms develop up to the north and to the northeast. And we do have a uh, pretty good chance for some of those to become strong to severe, especially uh, going up I-35. New Braunfels really under the gun going up in toward Austin. Good chunk of the uh, hill country. Large hail is going to be the biggest threat. High winds, maybe an isolated uh, tornado to spin up, but uh, especially large hail. So stay tuned late this afternoon. Thanks for the heads up, Mike. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for being with us this morning. Have a great morning. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.